everyone, everybody. Oops, I'm sorry. I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. Shout out to the Blastmaster KRS One. If you know, you do know. Welcome back to another episode of the Hedonism Podcast. I'm Dante, also known as Mecca Don, the Don Mecca. Some may even call me Rick James. Why? Because I'm cold blooded. Some may even call me Coach. If you know, you do know. You guys know what it is. We've been covering some thing things, right? Our topics have been topic ing, if that makes sense any sense but moving it along we're in the age of cancel culture judged by the court of public opinion and i'll be careful with my words but just in case i drop a noun an adjective a pronoun or even an expletive don't hold me to it this is why i do it y'all know what it is i'm just here to pod you guys know i always like to start out with gratitude but let's just take a shift for and let's just take a break from the norm just for a second right so, yeah, no, 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 no. Let's, let's keep it in the scope of gratitude, right? So what am I grateful for? In, in some ways, we ask ourselves, is hip-hop dead, right? Is it RIP to hip-hop? Or some may say some facets and some avenues of hip-hop could be dead, right? But thank God for the history of hip-hop because that gives us a reason to go back and resurrect some of the things of hip-hop. I got to say right now, Metro Boomin', what you did to that record OMG, we'll talk about it in just a second. But right now, in scope of hip-hop, how about um, we do have some significant names in hip-hop today that are trying to do something. Now, I, I know sometimes it's barbershop talk. talk. It's, it's, it's on the par, um, uh, it's on the golf course talk. It is in the group text talk. But who are your top fives? Right. It, 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 you almost have to categorize your top fives by um, waves that hip hop originated and how it exists. It exists today. But nonetheless, we can even shrink it down from five to even a Mount Rushmore. Right. But let's even make it more personable. OK, let's talk about the big three. You know who it is. Drake, Drizzy Drake, Kung Fu Kenny. K. Dot, Kendrick Lamar, and also J. Cleezy or J. Cole. So these guys have been going back and forth, maybe trying to form some type of trending topics, if you will, talking social media terms. But nonetheless, the relevance of these three is their penmanship, their pen game, right? If you will, there are they are lyrical assassins, right? They know how to make subject and verbs agree. They know how to make subjects and predicates agree. But when it comes to who's the best, who's the greatest, who's the best, that's still debatable. And now I have to give a shoulder shrug as to who's your top three. For me, one could argue it's Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nasir. But modern day, you do have three that are resuscitating and also putting a cardiac arrest out to hip-hop, that being Drizzy Drake, K. Dot and J. Cole. Drizzy hit us with a while back, even though it was a partnership with J. Cole with the first person shooter. K. Dot, however, fired back with the Metro Boomin' joint. And I'll have to say, it was one of my slaps. We're talking about the Rodney O. and Joe Cooley joint. The bass is in your face. Show enough shrugs your face. Just like you got sprayed by a can of mace, you see the speakers is booming. The song is grooving. My song moves along as the start's improving. The highs are getting no higher. The bass will go no lower. Cause everlasting bass show enough moves the flower. Some people can't take it. They try to be the case. But you can't get enough of everlasting bass. Dun, 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 bass. Hey, let me tell you something. Metro Boom is so a lot of people going, he's the king of beats right now. But I will say this when it comes to resurrecting hip hop and saying or asking the question, is hip hop dead? What Metro Booming did here was remind cats that we had beat makers out there. I'm talking about the Rodney O and Joe Cooley. We're talking about a DJ and an MC who made it happen, Captain, coming out of the West with the everlasting bass. So Metro Boomin flipped it. And this was off the future Hendrix drawing, right? It was off his project. Oh, but guess who came in 
and did us a little something, something. Kung Fu Kenny came in. So Drake and J. Cole kind of took a little dig at your boy Kung Fu Kenny. But he said, oh, no, no. I'm coming with it. K. Dot said, Mickey Fick the big three. It's just big me. Big Kenny? Big K. Dot? Okay, that's what we're doing. Okay, so the world was shook and you even got ladies going, that's my jam. Is it that ladies really and truly do value the lyrical content in today's music? Now, I get it. You're right, right, right. We got some of our club bangers, right? We got some people who are not as lyrically talented as some of the others. However, they make good bops for the streets. They make good bops for the club. It is what a T.I. is. There's nothing we could do about it. This is where hip hop has evolved to. Or let me be more specific. This is what rap has evolved to. What is the club banger? Right? So they made this joint and it came off of Future Hendrix. Joint, and I'll be honest with you, K Dot was a feature. This ain't his project, right? This is Future and Metro Boomin'. But guess who you're not hearing about? The two individuals, Future and Metro Boomin'. Now, you remember I had beef a while back, late 2023, when I was talking about the DJ of the year went to Metro Boomin', and I said, This cat don't even DJ. Well, as you can see, a lot of DJs, thank God for evolution, but a lot of DJs have migrated or has implemented their way of producing. Actually, DJs have been producing for years, going way back to the real to real DJs and then being your tape DJs and your record DJs going all the way back to the, to the 54 days, the studio 54 days when disco DJs, I'm talking black DJs had a guest spot in and they was bringing in records and then they took them out to the streets and was doing break beats. Shout out to your cool Herks. shout out to your theater or shout out to your Grandmaster Flash and some of the greats that I may have left out, but salute the DJ. But nonetheless, the evolution of hip hop did take us to this form. And this is where Metro Boomin did get DJ of the year. But now I see kind of where the evolution is going. The DJ slash producers, we're not talking about you know, some of your competitive DJs, your Cuber, you know what I'm saying? Your um your 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 magnificent Jazzy Jeff, you know, your scratch bastard and some of these cats, right? Your competition. I'm talking about world renowned battle DJs. The reason why we took the Technique twelve hundreds and turned it upright so that there was more coffin room for the DJs to battle. That is called battle style. Another conversation for another day. But we're talking about the aura of rap right now. Drizzy Drake. Um, K. Dot and J. Cole. Well, we know um, um, uh, uh, Kung Fu Kenny did drop the bar, Mickey Fick, the big three, it's just big me. Hot bar, right? You ain't got to say much sometimes, but you know Kendrick, he puts the soliloquy all to theatrics. The way he deliver his entendres, et cetera, he will give you tone and also delivery when he enunciates, pronounces his words. I only know one other MC that does it to perfection, and that's him in it. Can take a two-syllable word and make it four. Kanye is another expert at delivering syllables to words and making them into something that the dictionary doesn't enunciate or pronounce words for. But J. Cole... Right, the world was shook when K Dot dropped Mickey Fick the Big Three. It's just Big Me. The world was shook when he did that and was like, oh, okay. So now we're bringing Intel to the rap game, right? So now it comes down to Pen Assassin because we know the Big Three currently Drake, K Dot, and J. Cole. Now, one may say these are the nice guys. One could also argue that this is this is the rebirth of the backpack kids one could argue it's this, this is all subjective according to old don tz okay and i'm talking about dante you guys know i reference reference your former president as don tz but don tz was originally given it to me but i try to put some cool and umph to your president your 45th president by calling him don tz but don't get it twisted we're talking about old mecca don old rick james why because i'm quote uh cold-blooded do me a favor right now while i get on mine do me a favor, comment. I need you to like, comment, and subscribe. And spread the word. If this is good programming for you, please spread the word. And listen, I'm not going to make any declarations or promises. But I'm saying this is good programming. Okay. I'll let the streets tell it. But anyway, back to this situation, right? When you think of the history of the big three, 
Drizzy Drake signed to Young Money. That's the old Cash Money Birdman background in history, right? When you think of K-Dot, we think of TDE a la Suge Knight and them boys out west, right? And then when we think of J. Cole, we think of independent, skills for days, makes his own beats, pushing a ball uphill. He kind of takes the rough route. However, the man is nice. Let me go on record and say the man is nice. But most recently, J. Cole dropped a record called the Seven Minute Drill. And if anybody know about the logic and the ideologies of the seven minute drill, this is what J. Cole, J. Cole did. And he dropped it. I'm going to call it a, uh, it, it wasn't even a true rollout. But what made it unique and funky was the fact that it was called Might Delete Later. So you drop a project and you title it Might Delete Later. See, the difference in old school and what we see currently in music, not just hip hop today, is cats can go in a room, not even a studio anymore. Cats can go in a room with a laptop, or as the old heads say, laptop, lab, la laptop, folks. And then go and record. You don't even need a microphone. You could just really speak into a computer nowadays and then go and um, put equalizer to your voice and make it sound studio quality. And after you're done, guess what? You press one button and send and it goes out to the world. That's today's time. However, there's something you can't hide from and that's lyrical content. Is it hot or is it not? So these three always gives us something to go, hmm. He's nice with the pen. I heard that. Wait a minute. Let me rewind. I heard that. Wait a minute. Let me rewind. I heard that. If you think about the projects that these three brothers have dropped, it has put a battery in the back of hip hop today. So J. Cole drops this product project called Might Delete Later. So that means he may have just been on one or heard what the streets were saying. You know, when Twitter fingers start itching, people start talking, right? So the word on the streets is, and when I say Twitter, we're talking about X, but we're going to start still call it tweet and tweeting, right? And Twitter. So when Twitter starts talking, especially black Twitter, right, that's where your cards are either renewed or revoked. So J. Cole goes, hey, hold on. The streets are talking. That's one way for me to respond, and that's the way I know how. And that's put my thoughts to pen, pen to paper. Let me record, might delete later. So he goes on and do this track called Seven Minute Drill, but he was actually putting emphasis on Kung Fu Kenny a la K. Dot, a.k.a. Kendrick Lamar. And he put him in his crosshairs, and we know J. Cole, the brother's unique. And I'll say something about two out of the three. No, I can say about all three. They tend to put ad libs or harmony into their songs, which means that they all can sing their own hook. So here comes the unique part about these three individuals. You almost want to put them on a on a graph chart where the graph chart starts to bounce as to who's the nicest, as we would say, Biggie, Jay-Z and Nas. And I'll even throw Tupac in there just for talking about goat conversation when it comes to impact on hip hop, not necessarily lyrical, but the best of the best. Right. So J. Cole goes on to do this joint and he goes on and talks about K. Dot by saying he fell off like the Simpsons. Your first ish was classic, but your last ish was tragic. Mm. Now, just in case you're new to the Hedonism podcast, if you didn't know, I pay homage to not only hip hop, but the era and the life of a DJ. And you actually see over my right shoulder, your left, are actual records and vinyls. What you see is how history is actually recorded, and I have my own stash and library. Now, I lost a lot of my vinyl, and I won't get into that because I'll start crying right here on air, and I won't hold back. But I lost a large percent of my vinyl and I have been in search since of recouping and regenerating my library. And it feels good. If anyone out there knows about the vinyl sound with the fresh bacon and eggs crackling before a song starts, if you know, 
you do know. Once again, salute to all the DJs out there. Matter of fact, coming up, guys, I got some DJs coming on the He Done Isn't podcast that I think you're not going to like, but you're going to love. So back to J. Cole. Hope you guys are picking up what I'm putting down, right? So J. Cole then goes, right? So you got to think Drake control the internet or he can do a show by way of emceeing and body it. Kendrick Lamar is a performer on top of a performer. He's a poet on top of prophet. He is a lyricist on top of lingo. This man can put it down, down, right? And he's been doing it since he was a kid, kid, right? When he was on and off the grid, grid. And J. Cole has just given us something to think about. His lyrical flow is just nice, nasty. I mean, the kid just knows how to entice thought-provoking content, but yet give you a slap at the same damn time. So J. Cole most recently, and I'm talking about most recently, goes on the Dreamville Fest and did this. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to, like, jab my back, and I try to keep it friendly, but at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel, that shit disrupts my peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this catalog and his greatness, I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a microphone? We know. Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? So do you. As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro, that was the lamest, like, goofiest. And it make I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God aligned me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm going to take that shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive it for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path. Because I ain't going to lie to y'all. The past two days felt terrible. Like, it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. Now, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, rewind. Hey, listen. <laughs> Gunshot means forward and liquid means rewind. You requested, so we rewind. I hope I got that right, but that's one of my drops. So I'll say this. Yo, I'll just say this. There was two parts of this, and, and, and let me just reference something real quick, and shout out to my man, but I got to call you out. Me and my fam fam, we had a healthy but yet hip-hop debate. And I'm talking about my man, DJ Clef Styles, owner, operator, and a dope DJ at SGL Productions. And the word of Clef, it's not a hobby. My man and them gets down, down. Straight out of T-Neck, New Jersey. Some of the most love that you'll ever receive from a DJ perspective, Clef Styles, put it down. Shout out to my man, salute the DJ. But I went to Kevin, I was like, Europe, K-Dot, J. Cole, who you got? He asked me, and he actually laughed and was like, are we really having this conversation? And I go, are you serious right now? He goes, J. Cole, shut it down, period. Turn the lights off. I said, yo, it's K-Dot all day long. So we went back and forth. So I bring up this point just because when I heard what J. Cole said at the um, Dreamville Fest, I said, there's two ways of looking at this, and there's two vantage points. One was the hip-hop in me, and the other was the man in me that are females, right? You, you got your sexy reds, you got your lottos, and you got your uh, uh, your, your, your glow, and, and, and some of these cats, your Cardis, and, and your Megans. I mean, you, you, you know, there's no need um, for, for these ladies, right, um, to be chopping each other's heads off as if they're at a crossroads, um, and, 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 if they ha- and they have to chop heads. But I get it. Who's going to wear the crown, take them out, and hold the head Hi, so the world will know I took this one out. I get what battle is about, right? But ladies, there's so much money to be made, and there's also so many lanes um, um, for ladies to accumulate respect and the audacity to be known as a dope MC in the game without doing some of the things that are going. Because you know what's going to happen? That female is going to have a male entourage, and that male entourage who don't give a 
crap about nothing. May take it to the streets and elevate this thing because you know how, brothers, we protect our women, our sisters. I'm not saying this is the case, but I'm just saying this could possibly be some thought behind some of the ladies and MCs in hip hop today. But the man in me said, this is good because you made a public um, you, you made a public perception that this took you off of your game. And, and to me, it, the man in you said this, right? This whole battle thing and taking shots at my brothers was kind of like not in me, right? I did it out of a reaction, right? You know, I touched the stove and I reacted and said, damn, instead of going, you know what? I shouldn't have touched that, right? So his reaction was, let me go pen to paper and let me just do what I said, go in my bedroom, drop a joint called my might delete later, it was almost a prerequisite to what he did. And as a matter of fact, he's thinking, I need to delete this now. So in my take as a man, this could be something that you was just trying out and you wanted to test the waters as an experiment, but you knew that the reaction was, hey, yo, what you said was kind of soft. You got to come and punch a cat in his eye. Somebody chooses you, defend yourself. He said, Mickey, fix the big three. It's just big me, and we thought you was going to come with the pow pow, but you came with the pew pew. Okay, so no shade, J. Cole, but to me, um, this was just the man in you going, hey, yo, I I'm not really with the battle um, rap thing, but yet I am a lyrical assassin, right? You can say a lot for certain MCs out here in the game. Here's why I can relate as a man, right? As a DJ, you got some cats, right, that don't look like me, that don't identify as black American, and these cats are nasty with the turntables. And I'm talking about world champs when it comes to being battle DJs. But as for old Don Don, as for old Mecca Don, I consider myself to be a mix master, right, versus a cut and scratch masters, right? Some cats, this is their forte. I got huge A hands, and that has always been a handicap for me when DJing because some cats, and I'm heavy-handed, right? So when it comes to being a mix master, at least I know BPMs, and at least I know how to do blends, and I'm a party rocker. So when it comes to rocking a party, when you hear DJ selector, some people take that the wrong way, but knowing how to select the right songs at the right times and also blending, mixing on cue, mixing on beat, not cutting a song off at the wrong time. That is something that I have perfected as a DJ. Now, if you put me up against a DJ Scratch from EPMD, shout out to DJ Scratch, dope dope, dope DJ, right? Or Scratch Bastard or Jazzy Jeff or something. They're going to eat me alive, right? So if one of them cats got on the record and said, DJ McAdon, I'm calling you out, challenge. And they went and wicked, wicked, wicked and did that thing, right? And did the whole juggling of the beats and all of that. And, and I go, hey, yo, I can do it, but I'm not top three competitor. If you're ever going to put yourself in a competitive seat, you better know that you are top three of anything. Football, basketball, sports, school, education, um, whatever it is, dressing. You better put yourself in the top three or else please know that somebody's coming to cut your head off. Please understand that. So here's why I can relate to that. Being, and with DJ, let me just say this again about DJs and I'm going to get off this horse. The DJ world is so oversaturated that it hurts the business, it hurts the creativity, and technology has given guys an advantage where all they have to do now is push a button. And they are solely a good DJ. May not be great, may not be an extrovert, where they know how, how to get in front of people, where they know how to stand, where they know how, how they have the energy. Somebody told me, I don't know how you DJ, I get cramped standing up. Right, you don't understand. See, there's something between a, um, there's a difference between being a performer as a DJ and a mobile DJ. I kind of fit in the category of either a concert DJ or a mobile DJ, which means I set up my own sound. I am my own sound and light engineer, not to mention, I am also the technician and also the mix master for and the MC of the event uh, genre and venue. OK, and that means you can't put me in a box. I can go wherever I want to go. Some performance DJ, they are set to do A, B, C, D and they set and they get up out of there. Enough, on, uh, not too much on me, but I had to let you know where I could relate with good old J. Cole. Now, um, so as we know, Professor Professor Pod. The pod father, the man who's put the work in, I do value his opinion. And I'm talking about the wordsmith himself, along with Ish, Big Ice, Mel. Mm, oh, my goodness. <laughs> we all know Mel. 
Salute, Mel, and my man, Queens Flip, right? And I'm talking about those of the Joe Button podcast. These cats feel like family. Only reason why is because they put in work. They hold value to what they do, right? They come from an abstract perspective, but yet they will hit you with the knee-jerk logic, um, ideology, and also how they implement thought-provoking topics on the podcast, and I'm talking about the Joe Button podcast, but I value these cats, and I also see him as my brother and sis. Once again, shout out to Mel, good Lord. Um, but I will have to say that I agree with all of what they said about the big three and one of their most recent podcasts, right? Don't come with that soft, soft. You know, come with that thunder because the world of hip hop needs it, and we're gonna keep it respectful. We understand that you guys are not gangster, but, Sometimes the persona can be you don't want to touch them like MC Hammer. But I have to agree with what Queens Flip said. And he put a nail in the coffin on the Joe Button podcast when he said, and I quote, these in splats are not battle tested. And we're talking about these guys who are bringing in MMs. We're not talking about these cats who are on caffeine and doing battles, rap battles, right? Uh, 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 along with some of the individuals that I, I don't even want to name right now, but we'll talk about that in another day. I just got it queued up in the backlog. But we'll talk about battle rap, um, uh, like on caffeine and all of them things, another, another time, uh, another day. But J. Cole, I saw from two different perspectives. But we know Black Twitter. And we also know how the streets are talking. I've already told you guys there's two kinds. There's a court of law and a court of public opinion. And the court of public opinion are saying that J. Cole took the wrong way out. Shame on you guys. Because if the man is going to admit publicly that this is not his bag, why don't I just stay in my lane? Is that him taking a knee? But he said his game, ever since, this did it, his, ever since he did it, his game was off. Are you person enough? Are you human enough? Are you man or woman? Right? Are you LGBTQ AI plus enough to get in front of a large public setting and go? I would have to admit, everybody, there's something about being real and there's something about being real and outside of your lane. How many of you have the courage to stand up and tell the world, this ain't me, or this is me, or your confidence say, hey, I give you my top five. It's Dylan, 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 and Dylan, because I spit hot fire. Do you have the courage or the confident confidence to do either or? Now, if I could get back to my gratitude, I know I was on one and it was a long soliloquy, but the world of hip hop needs this. But at the same time, I love what I'm seeing from the quote unquote big three. As always, guys, I would like to thank you for tuning in once again. I'll have to say this. My numbers do not reflect who listen. What does that mean? Sometimes it's not about the numbers. It's what you're passionate about doing. It's how you manifest where you are going and it's almost like grilling, right? And I'll even go a step further without naming names. Grilling with a ceramic grill. It is nothing that you can just go light up and throw some food on, right? Fruits, veggies, desserts, sweets, or whatever. You can cook them all on a ceramic grill, but guess what? It takes time to heat it. It is a process. And I see my podcast like that. And guess what, team? I am falling in love with the process. So rock with me and thank you guys as always for tuning in. And I'll assure you, not guarantee, because we know when, what happens when you start doing that. But I am confident and I am certain, and most of all, I got faith in the organic growth that I have going on. So, hey, listen, over uh, uh, the past week or so, um, on the Eastern Seabo Seaboard, right? More specifically, on Friday, April 5th, there was a 4.8 earthquake that went as long as Long Island to New Jersey and probably hit some surrounding areas. Um, but it was an earthquake, and, and, and it's so unusual. Yes, we hear hurricanes going up top and, 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 and so forth and so on, but let me just say for those who do listen that are my family, I have family members that are up top that I rock with heavy and true bloodline and true family members I'll have to say all is well from them. And thank goodness 
thank God, that there were no major reported damages or fatalities during this earthquake. But it was something to think about when this happened. So I'm grateful that it wasn't bigger than what it was. But I will have to say this, scientists, NASA, government, what is this saying about our weather system? Meteorologists, chime in. What is this saying? Shout out to Jonathan. Jonathan just came to Atlanta and is now one of the um, anchor persons on um, News Atlanta Live. Let me just give a shout out real quick, right? I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to jump out. Shout out to Atlanta. Shout out to Atlanta because you can turn on any news station. And there are several here. But you can turn on to any news station and you have to to love the representation of black America on TV reporting facts and things that matter to our communities and our day-to-day lives. It's a beautiful thing to see. And not only that, right, most cities, most states, most surrounding counties and um, um, borders and and places that are rural and 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 off the grid grid they have to get serious X M not in Atlanta you can turn on station by station by station by station and you have a representation of what the media calls urban programming which we know as black radio by a ton of commercials right one call that's all I mean hey you we <laughs> if you drive through Atlanta if you know. You do know. Jay Sanders, you know, (laughs) come on, y'all know what it is. But what I'm saying is it's such a beautiful thing to witness here in Atlanta to see all of those in black news media and then those that are in radio. The radio market here is 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 crazy. It's it's crazy. But um, when we think about the earthquake and, and how our weather Um, evolves into these things now where we're like, wow, I I would have never expected that to happen. Well, I have to say that um, hundreds of people, hundreds of people made proclamations and they also went and got their glasses. People went and got their kids. They went and got their children. They went and got their pets. But what am I talking about? People, hundreds and thousands and even millions of people across the world, um, especially Mexico, went to go and view the total eclipse. For some areas, it was only a partial eclipse. But one thing that I thought that was odd was people were making proclamations and declarations towards doing some of the following. Believe it or not, they wanted to get married during the eclipse. They wanted the eclipse to be something to remember. And I'll have to say, when will you ever get that again? I don't know. I think they're saying 26 years from today um, as to when this pod is recorded, as to when the next total eclipse will be. Or monitor nocturnal animal behavior. Some animals may think it's night and coming out, you know, the freaks come out at night. How about them animals coming out when they're not supposed to or coming out at a premature time versus when they typically come out? People wanted to get tattoos, but comment down below. What did you do to commemorate or even celebrate the total eclipse? Did it even hit your area? Did you get a partial? Right. Did you get a third? Did you get a did you travel somewhere? Shout out to my son up in Boston. Um, He actually got pieces of the total eclipse or at least three fourths of the eclipse. But nonetheless, some places hit dark and it was the first time for some. It is my second. This was a partial for me. I think they said the first one or the last one, if you will was in 1979, right? So the next one after 2024 will be 26 years from now. So kids, lock this one down in your history books. But I will have to say this, in a day and time where some of us are addicted and have that dopamine of scrolling, 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 and getting their daily fix on their smart smartphones via social media, I have to say, and, and these are people who are working, stressing, driving, Here's the good thing that I can say about the eclipse, and I posted this on Facebook a couple of years back. I want to say it was five years ago when we had a partial eclipse, and even in Georgia, we was able to witness it as it as as the rotation gave us the eclipse. But one thing that I can say, in a day and time where people are starting to question their own beliefs, uh, one thing that I stand on, one thing that I stand by is the eclipse gave us an opportunity to pause, be still, and look up. It is amazing that a creation, right, some may consider it Big Bang, 
But it is amazing that the creation can cause us to pause, take heed, and look at the effects of what a creation is about. It gave us an opportunity to pause and just look up. So I say this to all of you out there who are fixated by that dopamine. Take time out of your busy days. Pause and just look up. I guarantee you, you will find some beauty in it and even slightly dive into gratitude. Oh, my goodness. It's been on like hot butter popcorn over the weekend. And even by the time this pod drops, we will have a result on the other side. But what am I talking about? The women's NCAA championship did not disappoint. We had the South Carolina Gamecocks, who were 38 0 going in versus the Iowa Hawkeyes, which were 34 and 5 going in. Two number one teams going at it head to head. When the ball went in the air, Coach Don Staley and Lisa Blutter, both extremely classy coaches. And here's what I'm proud of I don't mean to be biased, but they both are women that are coaching women. <laughs> I'll say it again. They both are women coaching women, right? They don't need our help. I mean, granted, we are part of the staff, I'm sure, some form or fashion. Men do play an intricate part in their staff, or maybe not. We only go there with the perception of what we see on the bench, which are the ACs and also the PTs, the assistant coaches and the physical trainers that helps us manage time, vitals, and also logic in plays. Now, I can say one thing, that the Iowa Hawkeyes actually have perfected that triangle offense, and they have the Steph Curry-style offense, which means that when the ball handler is managing and facilitating the ball up or down court, right? Everybody's moving. There is no standing and, and butt boxing and, and, and posting up. No, these cats are moving. I'll call it the Steph Curry logic to basketball. And that's Iowa's recipe. But guess what? They do it game after game after game. And you just got basically gotta got gotta you, you basically gotta gear up and try to stop it. They're gonna give it to you. But I can say the same for the logic of them Gamecocks. Iowa starring Caitlin Clark. She's an assassin. I love, love, love watching her play. And let me tell you something that makes me proud about watching Caitlin Clark. Her poise and her, uh, her determination to win. Uh, this is why we coach the games that we love to coach. This is why we coach the life things that we like to coach. Because when you coach a player... And then that light bulb comes on and they just get it and they go and execute what they got. Sometimes coaching can become, watch this, automated for individuals to learn and adapt as they go. She's one of them. Not one of them. No, she's one of them. And I mean that, but Iowa during this championship game started off fast. They was running and gunning. It wasn't looking good for the South Carolina Lady Gamecocks. Iowa's run, and as I mentioned again, that offense that moves, 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 and you basically just got to go, hey, yo, we know what they're going to do. Can you stop it? We all know that Caitlin's going to go rock. She's going to roll right of the rainbow, and she's going to jack it from the right side. The thing is, can you stop it? She's going to hit you with a step back. She's going to hit you with a fade left. And you know what I noticed about Caitlin Clark? Her jump shot, and I know y'all forgot about these cats, but her, jumps, her jump shot is of the ball factory. I'll say it again. Her jump shot is like the ball factories. Have you ever saw Lonzo, Jello, or Mello play? Have you ever saw them how they have that aqua jump shot? Hers is no different. It's wet, wet. I'm going to be honest with you. She has brought so much to the game, and I don't just want to say NCAA ladies, right? She has brought so much to the game recently that it is sparking attention worldwide, right? So the, the South Carolina Gamecocks starring 6'7", Camilla Cordoso. This woman was phenomenal on the court. And you know she has a history, right, of playing in Brazil. 
right? But she's still a youngin, right? The team themselves call this game the revenge game. And they also said it started after last year. They were dedicating it and they were writing it on grease boards and they were putting it on stickies and they were posting it everywhere saying this is our revenge season. As they were watching the national championship, they were literally watching film, not watching the game. They were watching film to get ready for next season. And I love them for saying that they wasn't going to accept for how things were. They were going to change the outcome and make something out of it. But did you realize that the South Carolina Lady Gamecocks only have three seniors for this season? And that is Samika Walker. She's coming in at 6'5". Tahina Pow Pow, she was at 5'9", right? And Camelia Cardoso, which came in at 6'7". These were the only seniors to the South Carolina Gamecocks. Why am I saying that? I'll tell you in a minute. But if you want to look at the box scoring of this game, just look at how the game was played. And it was a game, um, must-see TV, that was fun to watch. The first quarter, Iowa came in 27 over South Carolina, 20. Second quarter, Iowa fell 19 points to South Carolina's 29 points. The third quarter, Iowa came in 13 points to South Carolina's 19. Then the fourth quarter, Iowa came in 16 to South Carolina's 19. Now, for those that don't want, don't know, there is a difference between the women's NCAA and the men's. The men's play two halves. The women's play four periods or four quarters, right? So the Iowa scoring breakdown was um, Stalky busted 11 points. Clark busted 30 points. She's going to give you 30, right? And Martin, Kate Martin dropped 16. Uh, Sydney dropped 12. And the little cutie, Gabby, Gabby Marshall, she dropped six. Now, I'm going to tell you something. They got some shooters on, on this squad. And that girl who was playing collegian ball, ball hey, I'll, I'll pick her up in a heartbeat. Give me, give me, give me Iowa's bench. Give me Iowa starting five. I apologize. And I'm going to rock with them. Now, here's the thing. Just like a vehicle going on a long road tip trip, you have to watch the gauge. You have to watch the RPMs and the heat factor when it comes to Iowa. Now, I told you who was pl- who was scoring for Iowa. That was the entire team that scored. And typically, these college teams have a total of 12 to 13 players. There was only five players that played and scored for Iowa. Stop right there. When it comes to South Carolina, Lady Gamecocks breakdown. Listen, <laughs> shout out to Coach Dawn. She's 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 amazing and beautiful. I will say this: all players on the Lady Gamecocks played, but three players. I'll say this: out of maybe twelve or thirteen players, all players played and scored. All but three for the Lady Gamecocks. The final score, folks, was 87 to 75. South Carolina gets the chip and got to cut down the nets. I'll say this, Coach Dawn Staley, you'll hear me say it over and over and over. She is a class act. You want to know why? Check this out. Um, Just really want to just say congratulations to to Iowa and Caitlin for – making it back to the national championship game. Um, obviously, they are a formidable opponent um, that took everything that we had to, to win the basketball game, but just don't want to um, um, not utilize this opportunity to thank Caitlin for what she's done for women's basketball. Like, her, her shoulders were heavy and getting a lot of eyeballs on our game. And sometimes, as a young person, it could be, it could be a bit much, but I thought she handled it with class. Um, and I hope that every step of the ladder of success that she goes, um, she's able to elevate whatever room she's in. But I'm super excited and uh, super excited to share this moment with our team. They are incredible um, human beings and young people who trusted, believed, um, figured out a way to help each other learn and grow and ultimately become champions. Now, we all know Caitlin brought numbers, numbers to our living rooms, to our Internet. She brought numbers to the viewership. She brought numbers to ticket sales. You name it. This woman started playing during COVID when nobody was there and was selling out arenas. 
in every home or away. She took Iowa with her. That's one aspect. But the visiting team or the home team where they went as visitors sold the joint out as well. So what does this mean for sports, right? That women's sports are changing and it's becoming significantly important. Do you guys remember the song? Whatever you do, I can do better. Hey, let me tell you something. Women, if you're not on your surfboard right now, riding this wave, because I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Women are up, up, right? And, and here's what I'm saying. For those out there that are being, when were we down? When were we down? When were we down? Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain, Linda. Listen, let me explain, Linda. I will say this. It's not that women were down, but if you think about how some of the people work in legislation, right? Your executive, your judicial, right? Branches of the world. You have to think that it's been unfair for wages, policy, the rights of women. All I can go on and on, but I will say right now, starting with Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, women are up, up. And women, this is your striking while the iron is hot. And guess what? I will support you. We will support you. For those that are not, shame on you. Women have worked too hard. And I'm not just talking about I can bring home the bacon and fry it in a pan. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that we've always had women in leadership. It's just that they have not been given their respect due. Now that we see them. Good call out. I think it was during COVID when we got to see some of the women's locker rooms that look pathetic. And then now we see this era, this move of women being up, up. And that's why I reference, right, Coach Dawn and Coach um, um, from the Iowa Bucks, Buckeyes, uh, uh, Hawkeyes. Am I, am I saying it right? I, I apologize if I'm not. I'm on one. But it was so good to see two women coaches. Let me say this as a referee, right? And, and, and former referee in certain games, and I'm going to talk about what has been implemented, women are up, up, as a sanctioned sport in high school. And I want to be more specific, Georgia High School Sports Association. Ladies football is now a sanctioned sport. We're not talking um, two-hand touch. We're not talking tackle. We're talking flag, which is hella competitive. But you look on the sideline, and as a referee, I'm hearing all this bark, 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 and this testosterone that's just ridiculous. And you look over, and it's some of these narcissistic male coaches throwing some things at these women that they know nothing about. Oh, but you know who's out there balling? Some of them ladies, these badass coaches who are out there balling, teaching these ladies what it is. And what it ain't. I'm not saying that the men don't fit. Sometimes it's appropriate. But I will say this. For the some that I saw, not all some, not all some. They was bringing too much ego, too much testosterone to the game. And they made it more about them than these ladies. That's why I'm giving credit to the two women coaches that were out there for the national championship. There are some male coaches. I believe UConn's coach is male, right? Um, Gino, if I'm not mistaken. I could have that wrong. But I love to see the vibe that fits, right? And I said to myself, after the South Carolina Gamecocks won the chip, Coach Dawn Staley's emotions were amazingly beautiful. Thank you for sharing those transparent moments with us. And I will say this Thank you for bringing your unapologetic, authentic self to life. It's always existed. It's just that we got to see it. These are things that we know, but we got to witness it and we got to back it up. And let me just say this for my own personal reasons. I'm not sure what size you wear. But you had some gear on the sideline that I know you're probably not going to wear anymore. A la the Gucci, the Louis Vuitton. You can please send it to the hedonismpodcast.com and find my address, inbox me, and Coach Dawn, I'll take it right off of your hands. But I will say this, beautiful all the time, and, and, and I gave her a nickname, Bun Bun. She didn't come 
with the hair all the way down to her waistline. She didn't come with the loud and obnoxious gear. She put her hair up in a bun, and to me, she made herself one with the players. She wasn't coming overly made up. She just had her Coach Dawn Stanley swag on, and she became her authentic self. But I tell you what, you knew when that team messed up because those eyebrows went to a letter M, and she was angry, Coach Dawn, at her players. But after hearing those players speak at the press conference podium post game, try saying that six times. I love the fact that Coach Dawn literally sat there, folded her hands, and allowed Pow Pow and Cardoso allowed them to speak their mind. And all you heard was Coach is like a home away from home. She's like a mom to us. And Cardoso got so emotional, she said, my family's in Brazil. And the fact that coach makes me feel like I'm at home and a big six, seven woman broke down. And I was like, oh, I just love it. But you know there's some level of uncomfort when we hear these women bonding with these male coach, a la the Sandusky situation. I just cringe saying, I hope it's nothing there. And then we have situations like R. Kelly and Diddy and Bill Cosby and I can go on Epstein and and, and on all of these guys. And I'm like, hey, yo, I hope it is what it is and not what it ain't. Because if it is, line up, we're going to talk about it. So that's why I say with all protection, I love to see, and I'm not saying this to be gender by gender. It, it, it can easily be a ma- a mixed match, but we want to know your history and we want to make sure it's not about you. One thing I can say about Coach Mulkey from LSU is she appeared to be about those girls, even though you see all her on the court. Shout out to the late great Pat Summit. She was all about dressing for business game time, but she taught those girls how to be women. Not too much on that, but Coach Dawn, congratulations. But I had to say to myself, is this what IDE looks like? Inclusion, diversity, and equity? Is the college behind her? If so, do me a favor. Dear South Carolina, Pay the woman more money. Because last year they tried to crucify the woman, and this woman took it on the chin. She put her bun up, and she said, hey, yo, it's like Jada Pinkett on Set It Off. Let's do it. So we know that few have declared themselves for the 2024 NBA draft to include Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, and as of Monday, Camilla Cardoso declared themselves for the W. This will be must-see TV, so the ladies, we are proud of you, and we love the evolution, period. But this makes me think of a prophet, Peter Parker, by way of Bishop Stan Lee, with great power comes great responsibility. These ladies in the W didn't have NILs and other power and influence of social media like some of you have today, so get ready. What am I talking about? The Deanna the Deannas, I'll say it again, the Deannas of the world want all the smoke. Look, SVP, um, <laughs> reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's, there's levels to this thing, and that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side, and you're going to see it on this side, where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate, because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. And, uh, you know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. So we know that few have declared themselves to go to the W. They're coming, and they're waiting on you. And speaking of the W, let me leave you with this. Um, The Las Vegas Aces have went back-to-back, right? It's something about the air in Vegas right now, and I'm I'm not talking about the physical air. You guys know some of your Las Vegas experiences can be cigarette smoke. I'll just call it what a T.I. is. Vegas smells like cigarette smoke to me. But anyway, when it comes to the W, the Las Vegas Aces and the New York Liberty have been must-watch battle contested games for the chip over the course of the last couple of years. But it's something in the air of Vegas that gives me, there's something coming here, and I just don't know what it is, but they're making a push, and they're winning chips. Um, The hockey team, you know, 
Um, the Raiders are more competitive now than ever. However, historically, you think L.A., you think Oakland, right? But Las Vegas has got to grow on me still. But the fan base is ridiculous in Vegas. And the stadium, I've seen it in purpose, uh, uh, in, in person. Amazing. Amazing. Win, baby, win, Vegas. But I will say this, for the Aces, they are doing some things to actually, as the country songwriter said, give us something to talk about, right? But I will have to say, you know how you have cheerleaders and you know how you have a stomp team for the halftime. I love what they are doing. They have a over 50 dance troupe that will be performing at some of their halftimes. And I will say this, and these are women. These ladies look good. In the words of Bernie Mac, look like a bacon and egg sandwich. Bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. They look good. So as these ladies enter themselves for the W, and I will say tickets are selling like hotcakes for some of these WNBA games. They're more packed. You don't start, you don't see empty seats as much. And these girls are balling. Listen, when you get women <laughs> in a basketball game, that are dunking the basketball, that's my CTV, that are smacking the backboard, that are hitting threes from half court. And let me just say this, the three individuals I named that are going to the W gives me more reason to watch. This is a wave where we've seen what we have seen. We've witnessed what we have witnessed. Now it's time for us to support. Do you have it in you? Everyone, everybody, and I'm speaking to you. Do you have it in you to stay in your lane, keep it cute, and keep it cool as J. Cole did, as J. Cole did, as Caitlin Clark did post game. Do you have it in you to keep it cute? My man J. Cole was big about it. Caitlin Clark after the game, let me tell you something. She is press ready. She speaks like a coach. Right? When you think of your Rebecca Lobos and some of the other beautiful women that are sportscasters right now via way of the W. Right? Some college career ended at their senior year or collegiate year of playing NCAA. But do you have it in you to keep it cute? Not, not most of us do. Or is it not in you? Or are you one to just activate and execute YOLO? Hmm. You guys know what it is. We're in the age of cancel culture judged by the court of public opinion. And today... I was careful as I could be with my words, but just in case I dropped a noun, an expletive, a pronoun, an adjective, something out of place. Please don't hold me to it. I don't claim to be an expert. I just love this avenue of podcasting. And you guys know what it is. With that being said, I'm just here to pod. Until we meet again, guys, peace.